How's it going everyone? In today's video, we'll be adding Weapon Sway and Pitch Offset to our procedural animation system. We'll also implement sound effects for footsteps, jumping, and landing, as well as adding another layer of procedural animation for in-air movement. If you found this video without watching the previous episodes, welcome to the channel! I'd highly recommend going back and working through this series from the start to get caught up to speed, but if you're already working on your own project, there's still several techniques shown in this video that may prove useful to know. Portions of this episode may be shown as a time lapse for the sake of brevity, but I'll still be displaying everything going on and explaining out loud what's happening at a high level. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Starting out with the easy stuff, download and unzip the sound effects found in the description below this video. Drag and drop the files to an appropriately named folder in your content browser, then right click and create three sound cue assets called footstep cue, jump cue, and land cue. Open each cue and drag the relevant sound wave assets in, changing the volume and pitch multipliers to the values shown on screen now. Inside footstep cue, click and drag over the samples, right click, and create a random node followed by a modulator node. These should help add some additional variance to the sound effect to keep it from getting too repetitive. In the other two cue assets, just add a modulator node before the output for a similar effect. Over in our first person character BP, navigate to the walking TL timeline and add a play sound at location node after the footstep execution pin, setting the sound value to footstep Q. Use get actor location for the location input and use two lerps for the volume and pitch inputs. The volume lerp will be between 0.2 and 1 and the pitch lerp will be between 0.8 and 1. Drive both of these lerps with the length of the player's velocity vector normalized from 0 to base walk speed. Navigating to our landing dip event, add another play sound at location node at the end of the execution line with its sound value set to land Q. Again, use get actor location for the location input, and for the volume input, we'll use the same value driving the strength input of the landing dip event call. Lastly, find the on jumped event and add a final play sound at location node to the end of the execution line, setting its sound value to jump Q. The location input will again use get actor location. We should now have some audio feedback for jumping, footsteps that modulate based on our speed, and landing effects that intensify based on our velocity on impact. Moving on to weapon sway and pitch offset, we'll start off by creating two new vector variables called pitch offset pause and camrot offset, as well as two new rotator variables called camrot current and camrot rate. Then create a new function called getLookInputVars with a rotator input called camrotPrev. There will be three main sections to this function, determining how much to offset the view model based on our current camera pitch, finding the rotation rate of our camera and smoothing the result to use for our weapon sway, and figuring out the amount to offset our view model by to counteract the rotation of our weapon sway. For pitch offset, we'll start by finding the delta of the player pawn's control rotation and actor rotation, splitting the output and normalizing the pitch value from negative 90 to 90. Add a make vector node and split the input pin, leaving x at 0, adding a 3 to negative 3 lerp for y, and a 2 to negative 2 lerp for z. Use the normalized pitch value to drive these lerp nodes, and then set pitch offset pause using the output of the bank vector. Grab the normalized pitch value again and normalize it further to a range of 0 to 0 0.5, clamping the result between 0 and 1, and feeding it into a new lerp of 35 to 0. Get a reference to fp root and add a set relative location node maintaining the component's current relative y and z position and using the output of the lerp for its x position. For the camera's rotation rate, get the first person camera's world rotation and set the rotator variable camrot current. Find the delta of this variable in our function input camrot prev and break the resulting rotator. Clamp the inverse of the pitch value and the yaw value from negative five to five and make a new rotator using the clamped pitch for x and the clamped yaw for z. Add an rinterp2 node and use the rotator as its target input, and the variable camrot rate as the current input. The return value of this interp node is also used to set camrot rate. Use world delta seconds for the delta time input, then divide 1 by world delta seconds and divide the quotient by 6 to use in the interp speed input. This little extra step helps keep the behavior of the interpolation consistent across various frame rates but feel free to adjust the denominator of the second division for faster or slower smoothing on your weapon sway. Lastly, we just need to figure out how much to displace our view model to counteract the rotational movement of the weapon sway. Get a reference to camrot rate and split its out pin, normalizing both the x and z values to negative five and five. 
the normalized x value will drive alert between negative 10 and 10, and the normalized z value will drive alert between negative 6 and 6. Drag in a set node for the variable camrot offset and split its input pin, using the x lerp for its z value and the z lerp for its x value. Now we're ready to put this function to work. Back in the event graph, add our new function after getVelocityVars on the walking TL execution line. Make sure to use the rotator variable camrotCurrent as the camrotPreV input. Speaking of the getVelocityVars function, which we set up in the last episode, we'll add a little more to the end of it to improve visual feedback to in-air velocity. Open the function, navigate to the end of the execution line, and split the out pin on the location lag pause node. Multiply the z value by negative 2 and negative 0.5 separately, using the former as the y input on a make rotator node and the latter as the x input on a make vector node. Use the output of the rotator to drive the target pin of an rinterp2 node, and use the output of the vector to drive the target pin of a vinterp2 node. Promote the output of rinterp2 to a new rotator variable called inair tilt, and promote the output of the vinterp2 to a new vector variable called inair offset. Use both of these variables as the current input for their respective interp nodes as well, and use a similar world delta second setup as we made before to drive both inputs for delta time and interp speed. Now we're ready to put everything together in our animation blueprint. On the event graph, use the validated get node for player ref to promote all the variables we just created within the NMBP, and make sure their set nodes are being updated with the update animation execution line. Moving over to our anim graph, we'll start by adding the first of several new transform bone nodes after the crouch tilt section, setting the bone to modify to spine 3, bind translation to camrot offset, and rotation to camrot rate, then set both modes to add to existing. Hide the input pins for scale and alpha. Add another transform bone node, again setting the bone to modify to spine 03, bind translation to pitch offset pause, and set its mode to add to existing. Hide the input pins for scale, rotation, and alpha. Add one final transform bone node, once again setting the bone to modify to spine 03, this time between location lag tilt and jump slash land dip. Bind translation to in-air offset and rotation to in-air tilt, setting both modes to add to existing and hiding the input pins for scale and alpha. If we go to play in the editor now, you might notice that our weapon sway is a tad snappier than we may want it to be. This is controlled by the divisor of 1 over world delta seconds in our get look input function. Navigating back to the function, we'll head towards the end of the middle section to find the divisor, which we started off by setting to 6. Increasing this value will slow down and smooth out the interpolation, and decreasing it will speed it up and make it snappier. It's entirely up to your personal preference what you want this value to default to, or you could even parameterize it and control the quickness of weapon sway on a case-by-case -case basis. In my case, I'm just going to increase it to around 10 to maintain the responsiveness but smooth out the interpolation just a bit. Now when we play an editor, you'll see we have fully procedural weapon sway animations. This layer is on top of the locomotion animation system we created last episode, which we've also updated here to add more juice to how jumping, falling, and landing feels. Combined with the audio work we did at the start of this video, we're starting to see a solid foundation for our player controller really come together. Next time, we'll be cracking on with more procedural animation, this time focusing on the camera itself. I still can't find great documentation for this sort of thing anywhere online, so I wanted to show you all how to use your pre-made animations, like firing, reloading, and swapping weapons, to drive motion of the camera itself procedurally. For now, I hope this video helped you out in some way, and stay tuned for more tutorial content coming soon. Until next time. Thank you.